Okay, rounding out our media availability this morning at uh, New Hampshire is Kyle Bush. He drives the number 18 M&M's Peanut Butter Toyota this weekend for Joe Gibbs Racing. He is second in points. He's got four wins on the season. And, Kyle, you got to feel good about how you started off the chase last week and the position you find yourself this weekend here at New Hampshire. Uh, certainly. Uh, it's a lot better to start off, uh, you know, wins top fives top tens then uh then further on back so um we know last week was the second place but uh as far as points are concerned and everything else it's uh it's not the time to to look at any of that or to worry about any of that so for ourselves um i don't know where i am i don't want to know where i am but uh you know i think it'll all take care of itself when it comes down to crunch time and, and the better you can perform and uh, and do on sundays then it's going to take care of itself a lot easier Questions now for Kyle Bush. We'll start with Alan, Ed, and then Dustin. Uh, Alan Kavan and NASCAR.com. I saw some of your comments yesterday. I just wanted to follow up. Uh, to see a sponsor actually leave uh, MWR like it did, what, what was your reaction to that? Because I know you've, you've been, uh, you commented, you've been close to that or in, at least maybe in trouble with your sponsor before. What was it like to see them actually leave a sport like this? Well, I think it's, um, you know, it's a little disappointing, I think, on behalf of all the drivers, teams, um, you know, race fans and in general, because, uh, you know, as, as far as we're all concerned right now, it's a tough, it's a tough economy or a tough sport to try to pick up sponsors and, and bring them on in. And, uh, we know how important all of them are. And especially for me with, with m and support, um, you know, obviously I've, I've got a huge following there with, uh, with the family and, and the, the representatives from, Mars Incorporated and whatnot, so uh, it's a lot of fun to have those guys on my side and to have the, the support that I do from them, which which makes my job a lot easier. And um, you know, even through the tough times we've had, that uh, you know they still stand behind me, and, and we've done a lot of great things on and off the racetrack together since. But um, you know, it's it's frustrating. You know, there's a lot of race fans that that um, you know sometimes voice their opinion about there not being enough competitive cars each and every week and and whatnot, but yet they'll, um, you know, they'll they'll send in their comments to sponsors that they shouldn't sponsor that team or they shouldn't sponsor that driver because of some of the things that happen on the racetrack, and uh, all that does is drive sponsors away from our sport. So, um, you know, it's it's not a good thing to be doing those sorts of things. Let's go with Ed Hinton, Dustin Long, Claire B. Lang, and Rich. Ed Hinton, ESPN.com. Uh, Kyle, you said you didn't know, want to know where you were, but. Uh... Bottom line, you and you and uh, uh, Matt stand pretty. I mean, you're at the top, uh, and that's where we usually see Hendrick Motorsports cars in years past. That, that if there was going to be two at the top, has JGR at this point is JGR advanced ahead of Hendrick Motorsports? Do you think? Um, I don't know. That's a tough question to ask. I think this sport goes in circles all the time you know you see a lot of teams that prosper and do really well and then they sort of go back on their downswing and sometimes you see them they hit bottom or whatnot or, or if it's a circle graph or if it's a line graph you can always see it going up and down but like a roller coaster I think it happens to every team and whether or not we're on top uh, I don't think that's that's an answer that can be written until after Homestead and also you uh, where was it Atlanta you mentioned that the 48 team could just flip a switch. Uh, last week, yeah, they came back from, from a real tough time, but have they begun to flip that switch in your eyes? Uh, yeah, last week they ran fine. Uh, in my eyes, I thought they had a, a really, really fast race car there at the start of the race. They took off, and um, you know, I was running second to them, and they, they left me. And, uh, you know, so... They certainly had speed, and then we had the rain delay, and we came back at night, and it seemed like uh, it seemed like our car got better at night, which uh, obviously, too, Jimmy, I think, had some pit road issues a couple times, and he got back in traffic but then was able to drive back up through and, and I think got as high as third again. So um, if that's not good enough for you, then I don't know what is, but uh, I thought that was pretty, pretty impressive to be able to do that when all of us keep talking about how tough it is to pass out there sometimes. Let's go to Dustin, Claire B. Lang, and Rich. Dustin Long, Motor Racing Network. Uh, Kyle, last week, first race with the restart procedures since changed. 
what was it like? Uh, what, was, what did you think about that? And what are the might there be challenges uh, since it's on a smaller track here, tighter corners? What kind of challenges might that present? Um, <clears throat> well, I think I think we saw that uh, last week it was the first restart where I had the opportunity to beat Jimmy, and um, you know I thought I thought it was fine. I mean, it really didn't change the outcome of of who the leader was through turn one, just because Jimmy got a good side draft on me and and got alongside of me through one and two. Um, later in the race, however, I, I feel like nothing really changed. Um, you know, I beat Kenza to the line there on that last restart, and then he just got a push from Harvick to get by me. But, um, you know, that could probably happen here at Loudoun. You know, you can have guys that are lined up side by side, and one row push somebody harder than the other row, and, and that row taking advantage getting into turn one. So uh, it, can, it can be certainly... Um, important to who's behind you and what all's going on in your rearview mirror, uh, rather than exactly what lane choice you need or want. Yeah, but I think now, as soon as if, as soon as the rag drops, the guy in in the second row can push. It doesn't matter. You don't have to wait until after the line to push. You can push right away and, and get that line moving, and um, and and get an advantage. Let's go to. Go to Claire and then with Rich. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. A lot of the callers are saying they're noticing in you that you feel as comfortable as ever in this chase. If you look back to other times you have you know, tried to work your way into the chase or have felt like you're running for a championship, do you feel within yourself that you're more prepared for it now? Yeah, a little bit. I think that uh, you know, last year was a big learning year for us. We obviously missed the chase, so had a, a pretty – devastating um august september and then um you know when we when we missed the chase we came in with the mentality to run the rest of the year hard and to try to prepare ourselves and put ourselves in our own little chase to see if we could compete and um we did that we did we competed well we ran up front um in chicago last year i think we finished third or fourth and then um here we ran well we had an engine problem um and, and throughout the chase we had a lot of really good runs so that all put us in in the sense that yeah you know, we we can do this. It's not it's not rocket science. You know we know how to race. We know how to run up front. And um, when the pressure is on the line, obviously that situation is going to be a little different. But uh, we we need to act as though that the pressure isn't on the line, or to just be able to do what we've done all year long. That's got us to this point in the first 26 races. So um, you know that's where we're at right now. It's it's not time to turn up the heat quite yet i don't feel and um that's just because you know it's it's like you, you read a lot into what other drivers have to say as well too and i think jimmy johnson's one of the best because he's done it five times but you know he's a very good predictor when it comes to figuring out where everybody's at after talladega and then uh you know the final races thereafter you pretty much eliminate a guy each week and it comes down to two or three in homestead final question rich Kyle Rich Thompson, Boston Herald. Uh, Matt Kenseth just said that uh, he, you, and Denny bring different qualities to JGR Racing. And my question is just what are Matt's qualities and, and how do they complement yours? Um, his have a lot to do with cheese. Uh, just kidding. I tried to be cheesy there, but it didn't quite work. Um, Kenseth, um, we, we all do have our own different mentality about how to describe what's going on with our car and our feel and everything. And um, you know, Kenseth is, um, he, he's very knowledgeable. I mean, he's a great race car driver. We've known that. I think that's why, you know, we went to him and talked to him and asked him to come over and join our team. And, um, you know, he's had a, a good sense this year of, of being able to adding to our program and knowing what to add, whether it's been the engine stuff or chassis stuff or, you know, what he's felt with his cars in years past and what our cars do differently, better or wrong. And, um, you know, so it's, it's, it's like when I came over from Hendrick, I had the same thing. You know, I was like, well, we did it this way. We did it this way. We did it this way. So we learned from some of those and some of the others we threw away. And the same thing we're doing with, with Matt. And I think it just adds to the volume of our team, just knowing some of the principles that other race teams have and, um, and what they do to make themselves better. So um, as far as being able to exactly tell you what all he brings, it's tough to do because... Um, you know, it's it's just about communication, talking, and working through our meetings. That's that's the biggest time where you get the biggest sense of what people bring.